Want the reward? Do the damn work. Challenge yourself. Inspire change. Choice, not luck. Hey everybody, what's happening? Todd Crandall, founder of Racing for Recovery here, bringing you another awesome episode of Ignite Euphoria. And I've been looking forward to this. I have one Michael Herbster with me today. How are you doing, sir? I am fantastic, man. Happy to be here. So that's what I want to start off with. How excited are you to be doing this today? I think I'm more excited now as an employee here than I would have been as a client because I, my story is all about where I'm at now and not what I had done in my past, but what I'm doing now. So I love it. And that's, it's interesting because I mean, how long have you been around here? Both as getting services and working, is it three years? Four, four, four almost four and a half. Okay. So I was thinking about this today when I was writing, like how, what to talk about. And I know we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. I could have done this with you three years ago and it would have been awesome, but it's going to be incredible today. And there's a reason for that. So why don't you start with where you want to start and I'll follow you and pick it up from there. Um, you know, normally I would start like, you know, I come from a divorced family and this and that, but I would think what I learned here that changed a lot here at Racing for Recovery was I'm not I'm not a victim. And uh matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to quote the Cleveland book right off rip because page 82, it says uh, self-pity equals surrender. And when I realized that, I realized I was more than what my past was. I was more than what my addiction was. Um, and it, that, that I don't have to, I don't have to surrender to them things, you know? So I I guess I just want to start with that. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to go through that self pity and victim role because I'm I'm not that and when I when I realized that my perspective changed here at racing for recovery um you know the whole the whole concept of never having to use drugs or alcohol was foreign to me um the way you guys talked and the way you lifted me up was completely different than what anything I'd ever lived because it was the system's fault it was my parents fault they got divorced it was you know I I caught this case and it was the government's fault because I got arrested and you know I got sentenced and and I'm no that's not that's not me this is this is going to be good okay I do have to ask you I'm sporting a Def Leppard t-shirt do you have a favorite Def Leppard song before we get back to this stuff? Man, Def Leppard, Rock of Ages would probably be. Okay, that's yeah. good. Well, that's old school. We can do, I can, I can deal with that. Okay, back to this stuff. Uh, I'm going to pick it up here because I, I remember this. Talk about the day you walked in here, how you were feeling, what you did want to do and what you didn't want to do. Let's, let's start there initially. So... When I think of that day, I think of hopeless and lost um, because that's where I I, I was lost. I'd never been in an environment like this, and I I was lost as a person, and I was, I felt, I felt hopeless. And, you know, uh, I learned, I learned about gratitude here, and I remember when there was a day we were, we were sitting in this office having a one-on-one and I was complaining about my teeth and how long it was taking to get them fixed and cuz I mean I didn't I didn't have any teeth coming in here and you looked at me and said let me ask you how how much are you paying for your teeth to get fixed and I I never I'll never forget that because gratitude slapped me right in the face 
I was like, nothing? You know, the state's paying for it. And it, it, I just said, those moments, there are so many of those moments here in this building that were life-changing conversations. And, and they might have only been a sentence or two here and there, but, I mean, when I got here, I was broken and lost and just a shell of a person. I just got out of prison. Um, I'd been out five or six days. I had maybe two days of sobriety when I walked in here. Um, and I, I thought, well, I'm just drinking. I'm not doing drugs. Uh, I didn't I didn't really know the concept of total sobriety. And now I, after doing it for four and a half years, like I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, dude, there's, I, God, there's so many things going through my head. I, as you were talking, I kept thinking of words that would describe you. Um, commitment, um, perseverance, uh, dedication, consistency is one. I mean, how, how many IOPs did you do? Uh, I documented 290 some, I guess. And then how many, I saw you individually for two years? Or? A year and a half. Okay. Yeah. So just that in of itself, I'm interested and I, I want people to hear this because maybe they'll do it themselves. Can you talk about what, what it was like to come in here and get knowledge that probably you hadn't heard before or concepts you haven't heard before because you did a lot of them. I mean, you recited the Cleveland book on page 82. I wrote it. I can't even do that. You know, you and Emily have that ability to pull stuff from that. So I, I want you to share like wh what your journey in here has been like, you know, that's a lot of not treatment. That's a lot of help you were offered that you have courageously utilized. Tell people what that's been like. Well, it hasn't, it, uh, it uh, uh, always hasn't been um, glorious. When I first got here, I hated it. I hated the positivity and I hated sobriety in general. Um, I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't understand why everybody was so happy around here. And I think the fact that people were happy made me uncomfortable, which we don't like uncomfortability. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found myself having to get uncomfortable often in here. Um, and it was a total new concept. Like I'd never, I'd never been in recovery before. I'd been in a few rooms, um, usually because somebody else had a problem, not not because of my own problem. So I would go in to AA or wherever into different rooms, and I'd never experienced anything like this place and uh, the love they gave me. So it was, um, I mean, really, it was just a matter of people loving me until I learned how to love myself. And, uh, you know, I'm very sp spiritual, I didn't know I was a spiritual person when I got here. So Racing for Recovery showed me all these different things um, on the schedule, uh, yoga, spirituality, the gym, um, all, all these different concepts that I had never considered before, and I went to all of them when I got here um, because I wasn't going to do something halfway. Like, I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it 110%. And that's that's where I started realizing, you know, that at that time was Thursday evening spirituality, which we still have here. Um, and it's still changing people's lives as it did mine. Uh, I, found, I found that I was a spiritual person and I was lacking that spirituality in my life. And the mentors I had in that group, um, again, life-changing experiences in, in this building. And I just can't be any, I can't, I can't express enough gratitude for 
the people that were in my life at that time um, because the things that were taught to me and said to me, um, I mean, it changed, it changed my life. So I want to keep going with this. Would you say, cause, and I, I appreciate you for this. I've learned from you from this. I know I still need to learn from you for this. Um, but with the knowledge, uh, the faith, everything you have with respect to God and everything you do with that part of your recovery, would you say that this place has a godly vibe or God has his hands on this place? Absolutely. Talk about that. So we we used to, uh, well, we still do, but a lot of people come in here and they talk about the vibe on Thursday nights, especially for the live stream. Um and the feeling they get when they walk in here. And um, I, I was getting that feeling before I realized it was a spiritual thing. Um, as a Christian, we we refer to that as the Holy Spirit moving through the building. Um, you know, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as a trinity. And when not to get too too spiritual in here but as as a christian once you accept christ in your life you're filled with the holy spirit well i feel that the holy spirit is not only in us but around us as well um and i i definitely sense that here uh, i see it in work that i'm doing here i guess work um i, I don't feel like i work here but at, the more I get involved in things, the more I see God is present, and I'm not taking any credit for that. I don't, I don't want any credit for that, but when you insert God through a person into a building, it can affect so many. I mean, I, I was with a co-worker today, this morning, that said the salvation prayer with me and accepted Christ as as their savior and i mean I, I got a little choked up just now because it was um that's moving to me and if i wasn't here and if god wasn't in this building that would never happen so i, I think that's the answer you, you're looking for because it, it's definitely um a, it's a passion of mine it's real god god is not a made-up thing and he's definitely alive and and well in this place so moving moving forward i i hope that more people see that and they see it through me because when i wake up in the morning the only prayer that i make sure i say every day is god let them see you through me wow you know don't don't let them see me let them see you so i mean that's more spiritual than I thought I was going to get in this podcast, but to be to be quite honest, I wouldn't have never stayed sober if I wouldn't have surrendered to God, and I wouldn't have God if I wouldn't have got sober. So racing for recovery, God, they both worked equally in in my success story, honestly. I mean, I, I would never go to my church and talk about my success and my testimony without mentioning this place. And I would never talk about my success in this place without talking about God because they're were, they were hand in hand for me. So. I love this. Uh, I'm going to ask you another question after this one. But t what are you what are you doing outside of here with that part of your sobriety that you're helping people here in? So Wednesday nights, uh, three years ago, I as I was starting to kind of do my own thing away from racing for recovery, I've always been uh, affiliated with Bedford Alliance Church. Bedford Alliance did not have a recovery program, and. Uh, me and a friend of mine were both kind of talking to the pastors at the same time about, hey, we need to do something. I want, you know, the neighborhood, the community needs it. I mean, Bedford is, uh, people think there's not a problem there, but there is. There's a problem just like there is in Toledo and anywhere else. And I, I wanted to be part of helping that problem. Um, so we eventually got a, 
two-hour meeting going on Wednesday nights, faith-based, uh, similar to Celebrate Recovery. And it's still going to this day. And, you know, we load up the Racing for Recovery van and we take – Anywhere between 8 and 14 people down there every Wednesday, and I see it. I see it changing people. I mean, it's only one day a week, but they're getting, they're getting that spiritual guidance, um, additional com- uh, support from the community. It's a great resource for um, clients coming through, and everybody loves it. They go down there, they get, they get a free meal every Wednesday night and uh, they get to listen to some music, get some education and they get to sit and talk. And it's a lot, it's a very diverse group. Um, and that's what I, I, we designed it for was so people can talk about hangups and struggles outside of drugs and alcohol, depression, anxiety, eating disorders, gambling, sex, greed, pride i mean there's so many other underlining issues that caused us to use and drink um that a lot of people will overlook and that's that's what we're learning about on wednesday nights is guys can go in there and go you know what like i haven't said this out loud but i got i got a sex problem you know and that's another level of them healing that maybe they wouldn't have got here in IOP because they're not comfortable saying that, you know. So it's definitely um, a plus. Everybody going down there loves it. Um, again, I don't, I don't take any credit in that. That's, that's all God. All, all I said was, hey, Todd, like there's some guys that want to go down there to the church, and you're like, so take them. So, yeah, and then now there's some of them that are going on Sunday mornings. Um, you know, it's just a really good, good thing. So I'm going to go back to you're in IOP. You don't want sobriety. You see all mm-hmm. these happy people. Can you talk about the process that helped your mind change where you're receptive that now you're doing what you're doing with all this? Because that's what I – and I know you do too because you, quote, work here – this is what we want to convey to people that are watching this. You know, it's like the the transformation, the eye-opening clinical and and uh, conceptual things that we do here, how they actually work, and they're different, and they're unique, and they're actually, when they're applied, they do help people. So what was it in there that helped open your mind to get you to where you are today? Honestly, uh, um, the support in the community, um, one of my first support groups here, I I remember an individual that came up to me and and asked me if I wanted to go out afterwards and go to dinner. I I declined at that point because I was so broken. I, I didn't feel like I deserved it, but I still remember that. And it was that, it was that kind of, attitude and that kind of support and love that got me to the next day and that's all it was was you guys just kept telling me you know i i I think i'm at boston when when i say this is just keep coming and don't use and i'd come back the next day and i'd be like okay i came back and i didn't use now what do it again. And, yeah. And that was that was it. Yeah. Do it again. Let's let's keep doing this. Yeah. And I and I kept doing it and kept doing it and I trusted the process until that gratitude started kicking in. Um humility. I remember many IOPs that I thought I had all this and was doing all that and I had a whole six weeks clean and you yourself we go, Hold on, that's not right. <laughs> And that always stung a little, yeah. but it was humbling, yeah. and I was learning from it because I would take notes, and I would write it down, and I would always look back and reflect, like, what, what where was my head at two weeks ago? Where was my head at two months ago? Um, that, that journaling and keeping track... And I, I don't know, it's just some, at some point I became somebody that wanted to learn 
what I was being taught and how I was being taught yep. so I could help others, you know. And uh, that was that was a changing point in my recovery it was when I realized that I wasn't a victim. What I had to say meant something and it could help others you know and i actually might be able to help somebody by helping myself beautiful and that that you know there there was um a gentleman that used to come on the spirituality mike davis i hope you don't mind me putting his name out there but Good he's dude. he's a very the most godly person most anointed person i've ever met in my life and one day on a in a spirituality group he looked at me and said michael i i don't always do this but god wants me to tell you that everything's going to be okay and not to worry about a job right now because you're going to talk for a living and I went, talk for a living? Nobody wants to hear me talk. Maybe I'm supposed to be a pastor. And I started really digging into, like, my purpose in life. And, well, I've been talking for a living for over a year now. Hmm. So I always think back to that, like, maybe that guy knew something, <laughs> you know? Um I guess um, back to your initial question of what I learned here was just that I had to be accountable for my own actions. And uh, all these things were a process, you know. Everything I've talked about didn't happen all at once. Um, I, had to, I had to have patience, and I don't have everything back. For almost four and a half years, mm -hmm. I still don't have a relationship with my son. And one of the biggest things that I had to do was to, is to say out loud that my actions caused me to give him up. Um, I chose to do drugs rather than raise my son. And, you know, someday he might, he might hear this, and I hope he goes, wow. He he admitted that, you know, and I got I got cho I'm getting choked up just talking about it, and that's not an easy thing to do. But those were the difficult things that I had to do to heal. Um, you know, I I've, being a man of God, I know God will make that right someday in my life. What do you want to say to your son right now? I'm doing the best I can. How do you feel about that? Um, I don't know, man. I that's a tough question. How do I feel about doing the best I can? I know it's enough. I know it's enough, and I I know um that when that time comes, he'll be like, "Wow, you're." you changed you know i haven't seen my son in seven years so um it's something that i feel helps others it makes me uniquely qualified to um counsel people that maybe you're going through the same thing maybe they're like man i'm doing everything right and i'm doing this and i'm went back to school and i paid off all my fines and i got all this i got my driver's license and i can go yeah me too but it's not enough keep going you know keep going and i i remember it was i had a i think i had a year maybe maybe not quite a year and and you looked at me and said I want to talk to you when you got five years. So we're almost, we're almost there. Right. We're right, almost dude. there. So, and that's the same kind of uh, mentality and that I want to show my clients that are going through the same thing. It's like, keep going. Don't stop. 
because the second you stop is when you're never going to get your kid back. Um, can I talk about my education a little bit? I'm pretty I'm proud get of that. I'm all gonna, right. Yeah, I, dude, I got it. Yeah, yeah, you, got I got me, it. you got me in a deep subject. I'm trying to deflect it. I'm, I'm like, can no, we talk we're not about something yet. else? No, I'm, I, dude, I, I got a lot of stuff in there. This, God, I'm just sitting here, though, man, and just thinking about how long we've had a relationship, man. Even I'm like, wow, yeah, we talked about that or the teeth thing. That was a profound day in here for that. But you, the it's interesting. A lot of the things that just that one, you know, hey, I want to hear it in five. That was said to me on my one year. You know, I, hey, man, I got a year. You know, it's like, yeah, we feel good about that. But in the big scheme of life, it's like, who cares? Right. Which is great. And a younger kid, he's my brother's age, eight years younger than me. I said that to him on the phone and he said, big deal. Call me when you have five. And I was like, oh, OK. You know, and it, what he wasn't he wasn't, you know, belittling the year. He's like, dude, you tormented this community for 13 years. So rein it in, you know, and keep going. And it, you're doing it now, too. You find yourself taking what, it, you know, God graciously gave us and having the opportunity then to very kindly and delicately give it back. And it's great when it works as Exhibit A, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you brought up the educational stuff. Again, I, I'm interested, you know, obviously what you're doing and why, you know, what made you decide to do that and what you plan on doing with it while you're with us, which is hopefully a lifer, right? So talk about that. So I, one of the biggest reasons I decided to go back to school was I knew I was uniquely qualified because of my life, my addiction, my surviving heroin, I survive in the streets. Like, I mean, without going into it i spent a lot of time out there on the sidewalks you know homeless um abandoned buildings and and whatnot and i knew i had that street smarts i knew i had the the recovery part of it but i didn't have any education to back it up and that was um you know i got my cdca i was like oh, they sent it to me i'm like that now what and I told my now wife, then then girlfriend, I said, I think I'm going to go back to college or go, go to college. I'd never been to college. <laughs> and she's like, what? Wait, you were going to get a certificate. Now you're talking about a four-year bachelor degree. I'm like, yeah, I, I need to do that for me. And that's when I say keep going, that's me keep going because this college is hard yeah, matter of fact college sucks <laughs> i don't like it i'm halfway through my four years right now and sometimes it's like man i want to quit but in the back of my mind i just let's just keep going you know um and the, the more i learn the more this job gets easier yeah. so i mean it's definitely implementing it into what I do and uh, especially since I, I actually switched my major from science of psychology and addiction to sci science and psychology uh, and behavioral health um, and things became a lot more relevant of what I'm doing now um, here so that I want to continue just to help others but i want i want them to go well who are you well i'm one a survivor i'm two in recovery and three i got a couple letters behind my name that might or may not mean anything to you but they weren't easy to get i'm sorry dude <laughs> i'm laughing because you know exactly right you know i mean exactly right yeah and i <laughs> I know um, talking to you, <laughs> many conversations we had, you weren't, you, you told me probably more than once the college sucks, <laughs> dude, but this is what I need to do so I can do what my purpose is. And um, being a man of faith, 
I pray about decisions like this and this is this is my calling. This is my my purpose. What do you and, want to do here? I mean, if I'm a counselor, that's cool. Right now I'm a case manager and that's cool. But I didn't come here to be a case manager or a counselor. I came here to make a difference. And you know, it's like I told the gentleman that interviewed me for the first time for a job here that already knew me and I said, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm going to help people and I'm either going to help people at Racing for Recovery, which is the best, or I'll be helping somebody somewhere else that's not. And this is where I want to be because this works. This is absolutely hands down the cutting edge of recovery, and that's where I want to be. So whatever I do here, be working in marketing, be advertising, be counseling, case management, where, wherever I fit here, I'm happy with that. I mean, I hope to be a counselor. Um, well, I mean, I am a counselor, right? right. I mean, CDCA, <laughs> too. Right. I'll be getting my L here. I'll be a licensed counselor by the end of summer. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a title, though. Right. I, well, what I want to be is the difference. Do you think you are? I know I am. Right on, dude. I know you are, too. I yeah. uh, I had uh, Dean and Sam on, so their podcast already aired by the time yours is coming on, so people will already know this. But it's like I today's another one of those days where, and I don't use the word proud for myself, like ever, really, but I'm I'm proud to be a part of watching you be awesome. I, that's why I started this thing. And despite any, uh, I'll keep it positive, despite all the positive things that I've seen in this, you are 100% an example of what I had envisioned for this place. And not to mention that, and I wasn't going to get into this, but I kind of am very delicately. I, uh, as a compliment to you and an honor to you, I, I've watched and I've seen the way you've grown with your faith. And, and I'm like, I don't have that. You know that. I, 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 that is the one piece that I don't have. But you have been a total inspiration and an example of what that piece does. So in my own way, in the, you know, in the darkness of the night, do I think of you and pick up a book and think and read and do whatever? 100%. And has it helped? Yes. And I have you to thank for that. My, my grandma planted that seed, and so did my coach. Um, back when I was 17, he took me on a, I guess it was a young life trip. And, you know, I, I accepted, you know, Christ at that time when I was not in the best condition. I didn't even know what I was doing, but I knew I needed something. And you have helped over the course of the, the years that I've been fortunate to know you to just keep watering that thing. And I I hope someday it blossoms to what you have because I admire and respect you for that. And hearing you just say the story that you shared about another staff member here, I'm like, that's the part that I think will grow us more. And that's you. That is, I didn't do any of that. That's what you have done here. And I'm thankful for that. Can I tell you what that does for me? Sure. That spirituality and that faith. Um. It gives me peace and serenity, like it, and only that. Um, you know, our our big ideas. One of them is we're not immune to life's hardships. While it's biblically, is that we accept hardships as a pathway to peace. And without those two things, being able to accept them and realize that they're gonna be all things are going to be made right and that that alone takes away all anxiety takes away all fear and i just live in peace so i mean when people talk about well what if christianity isn't true then you die and you go to dust hmm. 
But what if it is true? And you have to, and not to get too much into heaven and hell, but I look at hell as being what we're doing here on earth right now with war and kids getting shot in school and tears and pain and anguish and sorrow and heaven's going to be the opposite of all that and i know that's where i'm going and i'm only here temporary so what i mean that's serenity and peace right there Hmm. i mean yeah it's human to worry and it's human to have anxiety about some things but when you put christ in the middle of all of it and know that his promises are true i mean why wouldn't why wouldn't we believe what do we got to lose can i equate that on a smaller scale about coming into here for getting sober why wouldn't you do what we're doing exactly your life isn't working the way it is exactly right? and you know that that was going back to your original topic of what i learned here and everything um i watched you and matt and a couple of other guys um do this and and that's all i had to do was watch and now i hope i have well i know i have because i i had a session with a client yesterday that was very rewarding and i got to see that growth and that trust he trusts me as a clinician and said if it wasn't for me being able to trust you i wouldn't be where i'm at today and almost got teared up but that that's what it's about and i was able to come here and i was able to trust the staff here with my life and that's what i want to be able to give back to the people coming through here now is that trust and hey it's it's possible and i know it don't seem seems like a lot right now but Give it some time because right. you can be where I'm at. And you could be, and I tell the people all this all the time, you could be f- pass me up and succeed well more than what I've achieved easily. Isn't that the definition of a good leader is one that's willing to help somebody be better than they are. And that that's what I think everybody who's on our staff is doing. We're giving it back in hopes that, you know, like I say it all the time, you want my job, come, come get it. You know, you want to do whatever, go do it. You know, it's not about listen to me. I know everything. And uh, no, it's about, I, we want to help people be better than what we are. That's how this has gotten better. You know, tell me, and I'm, again, I have so many thoughts going through my head. Um, what was it like going to Ironman Michigan last year with your mom? That was, uh, it was uh, motivating and inspiring. And just to see the, the diversity and all the different people um, that took part in that, either, either actually participating or just there, um, helping, volunteering, cheering on. I mean, the whole thing was um i mean let me go ahead and say it like it was racing for recovery it it really the the team the team and just the the com the community and how everybody helped everybody else and i didn't really get the whole iron man thing like how this tied into recovery when i was new here but yep. after going to something like that and experiencing it i i witnessed it myself um you know having having my mom there um she got to see a different side of what made racing for recovery um and it, it was just life life changing one of the many life changing experiences i've had with my several years here at Racing for Recovery now. You know, I brought that question up for a couple reasons. One, because I don't think still, even after 21 years of doing this, I don't think people really understand 
the whole Iron Man thing. And I, that's okay. And hopefully they watch this and they're starting to get it. But the second piece I brought that up for was you had mentioned this earlier about being at peace. And I remember, you know, it was an out and back run. So I saw you and your mom sitting under our tent four times, I think. And I know the state that I was in uh, physically and emotionally. And then I would look at you and I am knowing the state that you're in. And I'm like, I wish I had that because maybe it would ease this that I'm going through. You know, that was one of the, that was an interesting experience. It was awesome on so many levels. You know, we went up, well, we're going again this year too. Everybody is, but, uh, you know, having that house and doing IOP that day or the day before and stuff, and then transferring it over onto race day. And again, I, I know what, how I felt and why, and looking at you and I'm just like, what's that like? You know, I can't, and that, that's part of why I was talking about what you, what I've gotten from you in this. It's just like, what, what's that, what does that actually feel like? Cause I can't imagine sitting there with the tranquility that you and your mom had. I was like, ah, that's like going to the moon for me, you know? So it's interesting about how many, you know, you know, Adam was there and Amanda and a couple of my buddies and a couple other success stories from racing for recovery were there too. And you see different roles that people are playing to achieve the common goal, which is, yeah, you cross the finish line of that, but that's just the start of the goal, you know, and you're bringing in again, this other component that, um, I know we do here, but I'd like to see it done more here because I, once again, I'm feeling it sitting in this room today. I'm like, man, there's a, there's that feeling again, what, I know what that is and how do we get that more utilized so other people can feel it? You know, I I just want to tie things in as full circle. Um, and it's something that we've been doing up front is not telling people no, but not yet yep. or almost. And um, what – I'm going to go back to where I said I wasn't going to start my story as my parents got divorced and I fell into a bad crowd and all that. But you know what? Um, if that wouldn't have happened, if my parents wouldn't have gotten a divorce and I didn't go through the things I did, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Now, the highlight of that is my parents got remarried in November. So if that isn't God saying, not yet, hang on, I got a plan for you, but you have to go down this road of hardship so you can get to that peace, then I don't know what it is, you, right? You, you know I've been doing this a while, right? That's why I asked that question. It's one of the reasons. I'm like, when you said you didn't want to talk about that earlier, I'm like, well, we got to talk about that because that's exactly what I well, wanted to hear. It's just uh, it's another true. example of yes. my life coming around full circle. 100%. Um, I, I was watching a podcast. I don't know who it was, but you were talking about a day you got arrested for a DUI and being actually the best day of your life. Um, those are them hardships that you know last time I got arrested I thought it was the worst thing that could ever happen to me but if that would have never happened I, I wouldn't be where I am so I give thanks for them hardships yeah. and I think when you really truly are thankful for the hardships that you're going for and you you tell God thank you thank you that my body hurts right now that I have a body to hurt right mm -hmm. now, that overwhelming gratitude will change your perspective on life. And I don't like using the use, but I can almost guarantee that the day that people start giving thanks for the hard things, they will start appreciating everything. Well said. Tell, talk about your involvement with the uh, Thursday night live stream meeting, where that's evolved. I mean, the, the screen, oh, wow. the everything. You yeah. Know? I never thought 
the day we used to have a, a mic table on Thursday nights, and there's a lot of us with the same name sat there to your left. Um, yep. I never thought the day where we'd be at um, where I'm programming all the lights, and we got a pre meeting. Uh, with music and lights and the LED screen with the slides on it and it's just another part of me evolving and utilizing something I already had that I didn't know I had yeah. with being able to do that stuff. Um, Adam probably gets tired of showing me the same thing over and over, but I swear I'm going to get it one day. Um, yeah, I... I'm just overwhelmed with uh, the opportunities that I get to have still um, and being part of a meeting that was so beneficial to my success. It's interesting. You like, know. you know, I asked you what's your favorite Def Leppard song. This place is full of rock posters and movie posters and athletic posters and stuff. And that whole idea with that big screen came from um i was standing front row at a guns and roses concert last summer up in detroit and i'm looking before the band came out and they had this giant screen behind them as a lot of bands do now but then they started playing these images before they came on and i'm looking and i think i texted adam i did i texted him i go hey you know i'm looking at the screen can we get the screen in there and he's like yeah and then boom right away i started visualizing what you have taken what i wanted to do and made it even better than what i thought it was going to be it's like a uh uh what do they call a cover band of guns and roses at our our thing it's it's awesome and nobody does that stuff and that's what i like you know you take a a vibe like that and you put some powerful words with what people are saying in those meetings and not only are we delivering it in a live stream thing but now we've got a visual thing that's going along with it so i it's phenomenal and i just appreciate what you've done for that it's like watching another uh trait that you have or skill that you have and watching it blossom to be of service it's great yeah i mean it's something i've been doing since i got sober at the church is running uh lights and sound camera so i mean something i enjoy right. and i do i do it as a, a service i i don't I don't look at staying here on Thursday nights a few extra hours as part of my job. That's just something that's hopefully making a difference in somebody else, making a difference in somebody else's life. That's the first you thing know? we did. It's the one consistent that has been here from the start as the Thursday night support. And it wasn't live stream when I started nope. here. I'm, I'm old school. Right. Dated a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah, we didn't we didn't have none of that when I started here. We so. need to get some fire going in there somehow. Uh, That's the let's only thing. Say, I'm, I'm not, no pyros. <laughs> I don't think it would be a good idea. You might get front upon it. Let's, <laughs> let's go with like the, the smoke, smoke machine. Yeah. yeah. Some well, of that. Talk about, and you just did this. I mean, you've, you've done some cool stuff. What was it like to go with? to kiss with dean oh that that was awesome that was the, the third time i'd seen kiss but the first time i wasn't on any heavy narcotics right. um it, definitely a, a life-changing experience to see those guys persevere even in their 70s um and you know i think i knew all their songs where dean was like and hey, there was a few i didn't know but been uh, I've been following Kiss since uh, you know collecting their vinyls when I was a kid, so that that was an awesome, awesome experience, and uh, you know it it just gives me a motivation to keep going. Yeah. You know, um, it's like uh, I got an opportunity to go to a conference, a drug and alcohol conference in Cleveland with with Mark. Um, man, it was for uh 16 hours of continued education that was a good time you know and i think on the, we were on the way back and i i said this is just beginning you know I, i'm coming up on a year working here yeah. and um opportunity after opportunity just gives me that 
motivation to keep going. I was, by the way, we have a a uh, website marketing meeting tomorrow at eight thirty. Yeah, yeah, you saw yeah. that. Uh, but Skyler called me. I, where was I? This past weekend, Sunday, after I raced, she was driving down the road and goes, "Oh, there goes one of our racing for recovery signs on the on the uh, best or bus bench or whatever that you put all that together." I've had a ton of people talking about that. Dude, you guys got your name on bus benches and stuff. Now I'm like, yep, that was Michael doing that. The the walleye stuff, you know. Um, it's it's awesome watching you just do what you're doing and how that's transferring to get our message out. This place is. Um, I I owe I owe this place my life, <laughs> and I want to see it succeed and grow. I think. I have a passion for that as much as you do yourself. Yeah. Um, I really believe that this place works, and I just want to better it. I want to make it bigger. I want to make it um, just everything that I know it can be. And I, you know, I got I got that motivation from coming here and and talking to people like yourself and just seeing your drive because I have no idea what it feels like to be out in the middle of a lake doing an Ironman but I feel the dedication and the perseverance of your determination to keep this thing going and I, I you know I've read the books and I've seen the movies and I know the hardships you've had to endure to get where you're at now and um that just makes me want to to keep going and build this thing as as big as it could possibly ever get um that's that's it man i think that's why i'm i wasn't gonna be content until i was working here and doing this because this is what i was meant to meant to do right on so I'm proud of you, dude. Do you have any final words you want to say? You said it. Oh, man. I think I've said it. Just yeah. keep going. I mean, I can't stress enough. Um, if you're struggling to get in here, yep. just to get in here, make the call. Make the call. Get the assessment. Come see us. Um, there's more like me that work here, hang out here. So... Beautiful. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak and talk about not my past, but my future. I love it, man. I'm proud of you, dude. Uh, that is Mr. Michael Herbster right there, folks. Um, like he said, if you're out there struggling with this stuff, call us, 419-824-8462. Come see that guy and get what he has. Check out the live stream, 6.30 every Thursday night. If you need help, again, we're here for you. We'll see you soon.